If you're lucky enough to have a whole house generator, then you're probably aware just how bad their monitoring apps are. And although Generac says their mobile link app is free, it really isn't because you need to pay an annual subscription for the privilege of using that awful app. Thankfully, an engineering genius named J.G. Yates invented a wonderful free app called Genmon that runs on a Raspberry Pi to monitor your generator and unlock a ton of data that isn't available in the mobile link. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I installed Genmon on a Raspberry Pi and got it working with my generator. To make sure you really want to do this project, I suggest you read the GitHub page for Genmon, which I linked in the video description below. It has all the details of what you'll need and how to connect it. We'll come back to this later. The first step in this process is the hardest. You need to get your hands on a Raspberry Pi. They're in really short supply right now, so the best approach is to check rpilocator.com every day until you find one in your country. If you don't want to wait, you can always buy them on eBay but they'll cost you at least double or more. You can use just about any kind of Pi with Genmon, but the cheapest and the easiest to get is the Raspberry Pi Zero W. The W means it has Wi-Fi. That's the one I used. Just make sure you get the one with the headers, which are all those 40 pins across the top that lets you connect accessories to it. Those accessory boards they call HATS, which stands for Hardware Attached on Top. I used a specialty hat, from a website called Pint Size Me that comes with a pre-made cable that connects to a generator. You can avoid buying the hat and make a custom cable of your own if you're into that kind of thing, but trust me when I say this was the easiest solution because it even powers the Pi from the generator. The first step is to download the Raspberry Pi Imager, which is a free program from raspberrypi.com. Look for all the details linked in the video description below. I selected the standard Raspberry Pi OS and said to install it on my 64 gig micro SD card, which was more than enough space for Genmon. Then I clicked the gear icon and entered the name of the device, a username and password that I could use to log into the Pi, and my Wi-Fi information. The OS only takes a few minutes to install. Then I inserted the SD card into the Pi and connected a micro USB power cable to fire it up. I waited a while for the green activity light to stay solid green for a bit to let me know it was finished booting. Back on GitHub, I went to the Genmon wiki page and I got a complete list of the commands that are needed to install Genmon on the Pi. In a terminal window on my computer, I connected to the Pi using ssh to genmon.local and I logged in with that user ID and password that I entered earlier in the Raspberry Pi imager. I copied each command exactly as written and pasted them into SSH one at a time. Mr. Yates wrote out every detail so you don't need any technical skills to understand what you're doing. The first set of steps was to install Git and update the operating system. I waited a few minutes and pinged genmon.local until it came back up. Then I entered the git clone command which downloads all of the genmon code from git. I recommend one small adjustment to the bash command that's coming next. It's a long-running script that installs all the packages used by Genmon. It takes a long time, and by default it'll ask questions as it runs. After doing this a few times to prepare for this video, I realized I always answered yes to each one of those prompts. So I looked at the script and I discovered he allows a dash n parameter for no prompts. It automatically answers all those yeses for me so I really recommend adding that dash n when you run the bash command. This step was the longest by far. Although there were some errors reported along the way, it didn't seem to matter. The script is smart enough to try installing different versions of the packages until it worked. Then I disconnected the power and installed the hat board for a test. After booting it back up, I pointed my browser to genmon.local colon 8000. And just like magic, Genmon's gauges all appeared. They had no data at this point, but hey, at least I knew it worked, and I was ready to permanently attach the hat and move the pie outside. After opening the generator, I turned it from auto to off so that it wouldn't start while I was working. And I also removed the fuse, although that didn't seem to have much effect. And I turned off the circuit breaker for good measure. 
I used a 532nd inch hex bit to remove the two screws from the top of the battery compartment and a 10 millimeter socket for the bolt at the bottom. With the side panel removed, I located the Molex connector under the generator's controller. I unplugged the built-in Wi-Fi module that was plugged in there and plugged in my Molex cable. Then I plugged in the Pi and let it boot. A quick test on my phone confirmed that the Wi-Fi signal was strong enough for the Pi's built-in antenna. That was a relief, but the entire generator housing is metal, so I wasn't sure how the signal would degrade if I just mounted the Pi inside the unit. So instead, I decided to remove the old cellular attachment from the side panel that wasn't plugged in anyway. I drilled a hole in a waterproof box to match the hole in the panel. Then I drilled holes for a couple of screws to mount the box and sealed it with duct seal compound. Back outside, I connected the cable to the controller and reinstalled the panel. Then I looped the wire in the box a bit to keep the Pi from vibrating, and I installed the cover. The last step was to remotely test the generator and transfer switch, which can be done from the maintenance tab in Genmon. The generator started right away, and you can tell when the transfer switch kicked on when the power output rose to 750 watts. The best thing about Genmon, though, isn't the pretty gauges. It's the email notifications that occur anytime something changes about the generator. If you do install Genmon, please leave me a comment, let me know your thoughts, and be sure to throw Mr. Yates a couple of bucks through his PayPal donation, because it really is pretty awesome software.